everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Let's Chat Sunday. I'm joined by my very special co-host, Kwame. How you doing, Ella? I'm good, Kwame. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Thanks so much for co-hosting with me. That's always a pleasure. Nice, nice. Um, Kwame, you've probably seen before in previous episodes of Let's Chat, uh, but today we are joined by some very special guests. Uh, and today we'll be speaking about our walk with God. Would you guys please introduce yourselves and tell us how long you've been at TBC? Yeah, my name's Rihanna and I came to TBC in April 2019 and I became a member at the beginning of this year in January. Hi, my name's Sherelle and I started coming to TBC in 2019, August, and then joined as a member this year, January. How are you guys feeling today? Good. Yeah, Good. enjoying the, the lockdown being eased and going out to eat outside in the cold with the birds. <laughs> Not quite eating outside, but yeah, enjoying being out, seeing everybody open. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. How would you say, is it, you know, okay eating outside or would you prefer just being in? I wouldn't recommend eating outside for sure. Like, wait for the restaurants to open. Your food gets cold, you're freezing, and it's just not worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's from a lot of people, yeah. actually. Yeah, so um, back to you guys speaking about you just you joined TBC not too long ago, right? Uh, so how did you find out about the church? Was it social media? Did you hear about it from a friend? Yeah. So basically, I was looking for a new church. I had been attending a church for a while, but I just didn't feel like I was growing there anymore. So I wanted to join a church that kind of had a ministry that spoke to where I was at in my walk. So I reached out to a friend that I had gone to uni with, who I hadn't seen in ages, but someone just told me to reach out to her about attending a church. And I wanted to get some of her recommendations and maybe see if I could attend some of those churches. And she was like to me, well, we're starting a new ministry at my church. Like, you should come along, you should try it. And I was like, may as well try. So I went online, had a look at the church, like went on the website, looked at <laughs> some went of the... the yeah, I went on research. some of the teachers. Yeah. yeah, I had to research, I had to research because it like moving home literally mm. so um came along for the first time and from that first day I just felt so comfortable like I felt like I was at home and since then like I just didn't look back so yeah so um Rihanna actually invited me to join TBC um nice job Rihanna <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you, I try Vida oh wow yeah. shout out to Vida yeah yes. <laughs> so yeah she, she invited me she had actually invited me to her other church previously and I kept on meaning to go, but didn't. But I did find myself here. Um, I actually joined the three-day conference that Impact had. Okay. And it was really, I think I came to Friday and Saturday. And it was really encouraging mm -hmm. um, to see young people gathering, talking about issues that I'm facing. And it just felt really relatable. Yeah, that was a really good conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hope we can have some more in the future. Yeah. 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 Post-lockdown. Yeah. Post -lockdown. Post -lockdown. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely needed. Yeah. So I know you guys like both spoke about, you know, just feeling at home and just kind of very comfortable. Like what, what were some specific things that, you know, made you say, this is like, this is the church, this is where I want to be? Um, just in terms of the topics that you discuss, they were really relatable to people mm -hmm. of our age. Um, and just the feeling of you can talk to anyone after the services and after any of the events that were on, you could just gather and speak and people were really friendly and inviting. So that was really nice. That was yeah. uh, pre lockdown, right? Pre COVID. Pre COVID, COVID. Yes. Out there yes. yes. In case anyone thinks <laughs> we're, not, they're not, they're not, we're not meeting anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> no, that is really, I, I think that's what I love about our ministry is that, you know, it's hard to find you know, young people that are in the faith mm. you know with you and it's nice to just speak to other people and just mm -hmm. kind of get their perspective of what they're going through learn how maybe they've overcome something that yeah. you might be experiencing exactly. right yeah so that's pretty cool yeah. uh have you noticed would you say you've noticed like any difference between you know your walk with god before you came versus now i would definitely say i got a lot more serious mm. like a lot more serious i think before i was just a church attendee you would see me after praise and worship, just in time for ministry, mm. and then you won't see me afterwards. Like, literally, that was me on a Sunday. And when I started coming to CBC, I genuinely wanted to be here for praise and worship, genuinely wanted to actually meet new people, started reading my Bible more, wanting to be involved in other things outside of the Sunday service. 
So there was definitely growth in my walk with God. And I felt like I wanted to have an actual relationship with him, not just a church to attend. Mm. So. What about you? Would you say yeah, so? I, yeah, I would agree. But um, prior to coming to TBC, I wasn't a church attendee. I think growing up, I had gone to services like my grandma, but I wasn't a church goer. So everything was quite new for me, I guess, um, in terms of like services and just like what goes on um so yeah just learning all of that and I think for me in terms of like it's more about relationship not reading your bible and following rules it's for your walk with God and your relationship with him mm. so that's what I've really learned like coming here yeah I'm not gonna put out there like where you live um because we don't know who's watching but <laughs> I do know that you guys don't live in the Croydon borough so you actually you know, have to travel a bit of a distance to come to church. For some people, that would put them off. Mm. You know, they, they want to go to the church that's local to them, around the corner. But you guys make that commute um, every Sunday. Is it worth it? Or do you find that, you know what, this is this is long actually, why, why do I do this? Because there's many people out there that say, do you know what, I can't make it to church every Sunday because I, I live too far. Mm. So what, what would you guys say in response to that? I would definitely say it's worth it, especially if you find a church where you you genuinely feel like it's more of a family. Um, I think before I would use that excuse, like church is too far, so I'm not going to get, I can't get there on time. Mm. Like there was no way I could get there on time based on my thoughts and feelings about church. But I feel like since coming to this church, I make the effort, whether it's Sunday service or like a midweek Bible study, I genuinely want to make that effort, so it is worth the commute. It's not about the distance, it's about why you're there. Yeah, I'd say similar to Rihanna. I was saying to you today, like, we, you can make it on time for work, so <laughs> you can make it on time for <laughs> yeah, church. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, did, yeah. So, yeah. travel for work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hour exactly. Hour hour People commute yeah. train, long train Every journeys, day. so why not? So um, just about making it part of your life. Yeah. And, like, yeah, um, in terms of like midweek Bible studies, if you to get here for a certain time maybe start work earlier to so leave earlier just making it that part of your day mm-hmm. and have you found like the different ministries and events that impact has, has thrown like you know we have our weekly bible study um what else we have we've had events of like a spoken word night mm-hmm. uh we had I think, a quiz on um zoom mm-hmm. was it yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah have you have you enjoyed those you know different gatherings that I think it's a different way to meet people. Mm-hmm. So pre-lockdown, it was a good way to meet people because it's outside of service. So now you can actually have conversations, like the topical um, things that we did, like the mental health uh, talk, that was really good. That was something that was needed and isn't often spoken about in church. So that was useful. But even like since we've moved over to Zoom and we're online, those quiz nights have been hilarious. So <laughs> I would definitely say those are, those are like an added benefit of coming to this church. I guess it's that whole fellowship yes. um, aspect of church. Um, and I think sometimes it can be forgotten about. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's very important, as well as having a relationship with the Father, it's good that we have relationships with each other so mm-hmm. we can build each other in the faith. You know, we shouldn't be forsaken the, the gathering of believers. So even with the church doors open now, you know, it's nice to come and come to church and see you know people's faces, mm-hmm. people that you know might not be able to you know, hug and talk mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. But it's still good to, to have that fellowship. And hopefully we'll be back there soon. Yeah. You know, yeah. We can be eating our, our mince pies after church. You know, having our pizza, pizza. as well. Pizza. 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 pizza wings. Pizza wings, pizza wings. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that much is. missed. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> For sure, yeah. No, I would, I would agree. Just having, you know, people to fellowship with mm-hmm. is, you know, it can't, it can't be understated how important that is. Because yeah, sometimes, yeah. depending on where you are, you can feel so lonely. Exactly. Um, it's like yeah. a little catch-up, like, just mm-hmm. after church. Kind yeah. Of, it doesn't always have to involve church. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Things in your private life, maybe. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good way of building genuine relationships mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. getting accountability partners without just reaching out to someone saying, can you be my accountability partner or something? <laughs> yeah. Like, you build an actual relationship with yeah. people. So. Yeah. Yeah. And if you speak to people who've left churches, you find a lot of people say that I left because I felt no one cared about me, mm-hmm. no one checked up on me. Um, but it's, it's good to have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so we know that you know you guys have joined recently, and you 
said, both said that since being here, your walk with God has become a lot more serious. And I think a lot of times, sometimes people think that, okay, I'm getting closer to God, so things must go smoothly in life. Um, and that's not the case mm -hmm. at all. Um, are there any challenges that you guys have faced, you know, in your walk with God? Yeah, um, I've had like mental challenges, like, mental health wise, mm -hmm. um, so, like just depression. So just dealing with that and before coming to church and, and building my faith, I was obviously trying to do it by myself. Um, but I've learned that it's good to reach out. It's good to seek help, not only with God, but through there's people in place like mental health practitioners and, mm -hmm. and friends, family. You can reach out and just let people know that you, you need help. Um, so I'd say when I was struggling, the most was um, in October 2019. So I just started coming to TBC, and about two months later, my dad passed. Um, and that was just, it was a shock because at the same time, but coming to TBC in August, that was the same time I found out he was ill. And the fact that he was living abroad teaching in Amman, so I wasn't able to get out there and then the pandemic came and um, prior to that just I just feel well feeling like just not yourself and just feeling really low um, but getting through that I think has been one of the challenging most challenging things in my life and mm. um, yeah I was luckily I was lucky to be surrounded by a church um, and people within it that just helped me through mm -hmm. through that time. I think I attended the um, I was attending the Alpha course and I went on the Holy Spirit weekend. Okay. So it was after that weekend I came back and that's when I got the call that my dad had passed. Mm -hmm. So it was really quite a it was quite a weird time for me, but I felt like I had people around me that got me through it. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's, that's incre incredibly brave and for you to let that out. Thank you. Because yeah. it's almost like people feel, well, they have this idea that as soon as they come to Christ, then, you know, everything's going to be fine for them, mm. as you were saying. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, that's not the case. Um, what rather happens is that God gives you grace to go through things that are before you. Yeah. And um, I feel like that's what he's done with you. Um, and just knowing you personally and just, you know, seeing you push through um, by God's grace through the bereavement and still wanting to come to church, still wanting to be a part of the ministry, still wanting to, you know, be active as well. That's, that's just a, been a blessing to watch and I commend you for that. Well done, man. So I would say before I started attending TBC, when I was about 23, um, I got diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is like a type of cancer. And I was attending church at the time, but in and out, in and out, I wasn't very consistent. But that was like a complete like, door in the face, like, wow, hitting a wall. And I remember when I first got diagnosed, I was just in complete shock because I'd had a lump in my armpit for a very, very long time. I think it was over a year. And I'd been going backwards and forwards to GPs saying, there's a lump, what should I do? And they're just like, oh, it's just a, it's just a lymph node, don't worry about it. It had been tested, everything had come back. And eventually I went and saw the breast clinic and they were like, oh, this is weird. It's been here for a while. Let's take it out. And at that point I thought, okay, within like a few months, they'll take it out. And it was a whole year later that they contacted me and were saying, oh, how was your operation? And I was like, I haven't had an operation. What are you talking about here? And they were saying to me, oh, we've got it down on our records that you had an operation. We'll have to get back to you. And within about two months of that, I ended up having an operation to remove the lump and they tested it. And about two weeks later, I got a call to come in and I thought it was going to be nothing because I'd had tests and everything had come back normal. And when I went in, the breast surgeon was just like, you, you have cancer. And I was just like, what? So I got stopped in my tracks completely. I mean, I was 23 years old. I was at a stage in my life where I wanted to do church, but I didn't want to do church. I wanted to do it my own way. Mm. And it was that point where God was just like, 
you need to stop, you need to listen, you need to, you know. So I remember going home that night crying, being on my bed, just opening the Bible and being like, Lord, just show me what you want me to see in this Bible. And opened up on Job and just like read through it, like chapter to chapter to chapter to chapter, read through it. And I wasn't one to like open my Bible and read it. But in doing that and listening to praise and worship music that night, I remember just feeling this sense of peace over me and like long story short with that whole journey was there was a chance that it could have been stage three or a chance that it could have been stage one and when I went into the clinic they basically were like if it's stage one it's about four weeks of radiotherapy if it's stage three it's chemotherapy for like three to six months and then you have to do like fertility treatment and stuff like that so I was just like lord please let it be stage one, please don't let it be stage three, this is crazy. And at the same time in that clinic, they were like, the type of cancer that you have, by the way, if you want to have any kind of cancer, this is the cancer that you want to have. And I was just sitting there like, who says says this? (laughs) This is is, is kind of weird, how are you encouraging me? (laughs) And the nurse was like, I'm telling you, this is the kind of cancer that you want to have. And I was like, what? And they were basically like, it's so slow growing, even though I'd had it for like over a year, it was literally likely to just be in my armpit. Okay. And it's the kind of cancer that it had a 90% success rate once treated. Okay. And I was like, okay, I didn't know anything about cancer before, but this, I, I guess this is, this is good news. And when you hear about cancer, you never really think about good news coming mm-hmm. out of the story. You always think, I am a walking dead person. And that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. So when I went and I got my scan, it came back and they were like, you know what, it's stage one and you literally just have to have radiotherapy and I remember like being on my knees like thank you lord that I cannot I can't fathom any way that this story could have gone this way Mm -hmm. other than you intervened in this and you knew exactly what was happening in my life Mm -hmm. so I had the radiotherapy went back and they said everything had cleared up and from that day to this day now god willing it's never come back Mm -hmm. and even when they said it could come back if they if it does come back they were like, it's one of those ones. We can literally just wait and watch it. We don't even have to act on it. So I'm a big advocate for health and things like that because of my experience. Mm-hmm. But I would say that experience kind of took me off of this course, pushed me onto this course, and made me more genuine about my relationship with God, which is why then it took me a few years still. I'm a very slow mover when it comes to, <laughs> and it comes to like big decisions like that. But I was very genuine at the time, and I wanted to change church. And then once I started coming to this church, everything was going all hunky-dory. And then my dad passed away. And he was like a massive impact in my life. And at that point, I was just like, what can I do here? But at least, like Sherelle said, we had a massive support system around us. Unfortunately, Sherelle's dad had passed just before mine. But at least I had the experience of Sherelle as well. And we were able to support each other through that. And people in the church would check up on me. It was it was a beautiful thing at such a sad time. And yeah, it's, it's your walk with God is, is going to be bumpy. So I just felt like it was one thing that reminded me that it's constantly up and down. But the way in which I reacted to the passing of my dad compared to the cancer was very different because there had been growth. Because you were yeah. at a different stage. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was a long, long answer. Sorry. <laughs> to to like how, how it's been. But yeah. Uh, Again, it was good to hear your story mm-hmm. and, and how you, you know, propelled through it. Because um, I also believe that there are things that you go through that you learn from, mm-hmm. um, and by God teaching you in, in that first lesson, He's prepared you for what's to come mm-hmm. later on down in life. And um, again, yeah, you know, someone would think, you know, joining a new church, all right, I'm moving forward in my faith. And mm-hmm. to be hit with that news mm-hmm. that, you know, my dad's just passed, you know, I've had that same experience. Um, it can throw you off yeah. a bit. Um, but we thank God that you guys are still strong, still in the faith. And for me, it's just been a, a, a pleasure to watch both of you, you know, grow in your faith since you walked through the doors. Especially her, because she was a bit shy. <laughs> she wasn't talking much. But now... I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're all volunteering to read the Bible during Bible study. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys still haven't shown yourself on, when, when we're on Zoom. 
camera. That's everyone. I feel like I've turned my camera on. That's everyone. So you the leaders. No, but you guys are very active in, in the Bible study, like your regular attendees. You're here on Sunday. So, yeah, man, it's just been a pleasure to watch. For me, man. Thank you. And I appreciate you guys sharing your story and being very vulnerable with us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely going to touch somebody who's listening for sure, because I'm sure there are plenty of people going through the same experience as you. Yeah. Mm. Um, so even just opening up and speaking about it is bringing some healing to, to others as well. Mm. Yes, is there, yeah. What would you say, like, through those challenges, do, what would you say you've learned most about God? I think when I was going through it, I was kind of like, why is this happening? Like, what, what does he, what's he trying to tell me? What's he trying to put me through your testimony? But I think I spoke to one mate and he's like, God's not testing you. It's just sometimes you, you know, these, these are the challenges that you're facing in life. It's just how you get through it. So coming to Christ doesn't mean you're adverse to any issues in your life. It's just with God, how you get through it. And that's what I feel people lack and they struggle by themselves. Um, so yeah, that's been the real, a real life changer for me. I like that with God, how you get through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, it just, it taught me his compassion Mm. and the fact that we will face these challenges in life, but he will always be there for us. And the challenge might not always be what we think it is Mm. and not to expect the worst, like have higher expectations for God because he definitely has, Mm. you know, expectations for your life that you you think it's going to be here, but he's (laughs) got it all the way up here for you. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what it definitely taught me. Thank you. Uh, so anyone who's like listening, what advice would you say to those who are, you know, thinking about coming closer to God or kind of in that stage of, I kind of want to do, like you said, please, I kind of want to do it my own way or I'm a bit hesitant, but I do want to, you know, I do want to have that closer walk with God. What advice would you, would you say to them? I would say if you're in a place or a church where you don't feel comfortable, definitely ask. Just just put it out there into the atmosphere of people that, you know, go to churches or different churches to you to say, you know, do you know anywhere good? Like, try somewhere new. In terms of your personal relationship, I think just getting down on your knees and having a genuine conversation with God. Just mm-hmm. literally, not don't make it all fandanko and doing the most. Like, just have a conversation as though you're on the phone to him and see what he says to your heart. Because most of the time, he's going to show you in one way or another something that you can see what he wants for your life and then you can follow that that Mm -hmm. path but i think it is really important for you to open that discourse like you can't just sit Mm -hmm. there and expect (laughs) signs to be thrown at you you need to be open and willing for that so that's what i would say to you i'd say similar to rihanna and also joining not just attending the service but joining other groups so the weekly bible studies or the alpha course or the freedom in christ it's really those courses give you a chance to kind of delve in deeper, ask questions that you think may be silly. Um, and you've been on those courses, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ask questions that you think may be silly and just really understand more about things that you don't know mm-hmm. and just and just grow. It really does help. So you're saying people have to be intentional. Yeah, mm-hmm. arts. Again, yeah. And, and growing in their yeah. spiritual life yeah. and getting closer Intentional to and genuine mm-hmm. yeah. as well. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. For all your advice and your um, your stories, thank you so much for joining. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. We hope that you are blessed by this discussion and that this encourages you to have a closer walk with God. If you'd like to visit Trinity Baptist Church or you're interested in finding out more about the Impact Ministry, we'd encourage you to visit our social media pages, which is TBC Oasis House or Impact TBC, and that's on the Instagram page. Until then, take care. And bye for now.